Today, I'm going to show you how to engrave granite using a diode laser. I have tried many different methods and I have figured out the best one for you. I'll quickly walk you through each step of the process and show you how to figure out the proper speed and power setting for your laser. I'll also tell you how to select a good granite for engraving and discuss some of the things that can go wrong while engraving granite. So hello guys, welcome to Melopine Lasers. Before we start, there are some safety precautions you need to know. Laser engraving granite involves lasering paint which can produce harmful fumes. So make sure you set up your laser in a well ventilated room, use a fume extractor or air filter if you have one and always wear your laser safety goggles around lasers. Here is the TLDR version. You get a good black piece of granite and clean it thoroughly with some lacquer thinner, turpentine oil or isopropyl alcohol. For simple 2D designs like logos or names, use the threshold mode or fill mode. For photographs, use the ordered image mode and invert your image. In all cases, I used 0.1 mm line spacing and constant power mode with overscanning turned off. For the photograph, I used 2100 mm per minute at 100% power and for the nameplate, I used 1800 mm per minute at 100% power on my 10 watt diode laser. These numbers will change, so please run a test to figure out the best power and speed for you. For engraving granite using a diode laser, you need to get 5 things right. Choosing the granite, cleaning the granite, the design, the medium and finally the proper speed and power. One thing you must remember while picking a granite for engraving is to make sure that it's as black as possible. And granite with as little texture as possible would make an ideal workpiece for a diode laser machine. If you look closely, you'll see that granite has a lot of crystal-like grain, some of it is not black. When the laser hits the non-black crystals, the beam gets reflected and a lot of energy is lost. So try to use granite with as little non-black crystal as possible. Also, due to the uneven grain structure, some areas would get engraved deeper than others and your engraving will not have an even look. But we'll see how we can work around it. Another thing you need to keep in mind is that different granites have different hardness. Granites with fine grain break off easily when engraved and need less power but it's difficult to get a good grayscale engraving on them. I first engraved a grayscale image on a hard piece and then used the same setting on a piece of granite with fine grains and the result was horrible. The next step is to clean the granite thoroughly. You can use lacquer thinner and a rag to give it a nice rub. Make sure it's really clean, this is important. You can also use acetone, this will remove any polish or coating that's there on the surface of the granite. You can also use turpentine oil. However, what I did was clean it with some lacquer thinner, then clean it with turpentine oil and then use isopropyl alcohol to remove the oil. Step 3 is painting the granite. This might be a surprise to some of you as it's a common practice to engrave granite directly using a laser. You will get good results if you engrave directly on granite using a diode laser. But I found that a coat of black paint can make a huge difference when using a diode laser. As I told you, most granites do not have a uniform grain and the crystal-like reflective texture on the surface reflects a lot of diode laser beams. To get an even engraving on the granite, you need to give it a coat of matte black spray paint. On my 10 watt laser, I found that I could engrave granite 40% faster if I gave it a coat of black paint and also the engraving turned out even. I recommend you always give your granite a coat of black paint before engraving it using a diode laser. When you are painting, try to get an even coat, start spraying outside of the granite and move side to side. You will waste some paint but you'll get an even coat. The fourth step is figuring out the right speed and power. This is a tricky bit and if you want to use the settings used by someone else, it might not always work for you. There are several factors that can affect your engraving. The hardness of the granite can vary. Similarly, the power of the laser, the thickness of your paint coat and the type of paint can affect the output. On the first piece of granite, I always need 100% power to get a good engraving and when I tried the same setting on the one I bought next, I was in for a surprise. It had a good black appearance and needed only 30% power to get a similar result. 
So I suggest you run a power test whenever you bring in a new batch of granite. Once you have the boxes engraved, clean them and look for the engraving that has a good white appearance and fewer burnt black parts. Here is something I observed while working on these tests. I was using my 10 watt laser while engraving grids between 1000 mm per minute and 2000 mm per minute. I found that the granite melted and darkened at slower speeds. I tried to expand the range and engraved grids up to 2500 mm per minute. I noticed a dip in quality when the engraving was done too quickly. I zeroed in on 2150 mm per minute as the optimum speed for engraving granite on this particular machine. I tested this theory by engraving the word Melopine using the same settings. The result was good as expected. I used a blade to chip away at the engraved area and as a result, I got these really white lines. To figure out the best speed and power for engraving grayscale images, you can try engraving small images using the settings you figured out as I did. And if you are getting too much of a white engraving even for black areas, you need to dial down the power. If the engraving is not showing white areas where it should, then you need to increase the power or lower the speed. Now, here is the speed and power I use on my different machines. You can use it as a starting point for your test so that you don't have to waste a lot of material and time testing it. Pause the screen or take a screenshot. If you want to learn how to make a power scale test pattern on Lightburn, I have a video on that. I'll link it in the description. Speaking of learning, if you're new to lasers, you should definitely sign up for our free 7-day course called Getting Started with Lasers. It covers all the fundamentals to help you get started. And if you're not new to lasers, I would still recommend you to sign up because you'll receive cool tips and tricks in your email every week after the 7-day course. I'll leave the link in the description. Do sign up and you won't be disappointed. Also hit that subscribe button if you haven't already for some cool videos on lasers. Now comes the design. I have decided to pick two unique projects to exhibit the extent of what you can do with granite and diode laser. The first kind is where you simply engrave portions to get a flat design with no shading, like logos or nameplates. The second kind is photographs that have shading. For the first kind of design, it is better to use vector images. You can also use Lightburn to convert images to vectors using the image trace option. Although most people use the crosshatch option, I found that running the laser over an engraved area leaves burn marks. Also turn the constant power mode on. If you're using images, you'll have to use the threshold mode. For line spacing, go for 0.1mm or 10 lines per millimeter. For photographs, make sure your image has good contrast and detail. You can use any image editing software to see how it looks when it's converted to grayscale. Tune it properly and load it into Lightburn. Now, engraving on granite produces white areas. It cannot engrave different levels of white. So what you need to do is use the ordered mode for engraving. This converts the picture into tiny dots. Pure white areas will have closely packed dots. Dark gray areas will have more space between the dots and the areas that are light gray will have the dots placed more apart. This will make it look like there are different shades. Also make sure that you invert the image because you want to engrave the granite to make it white. The software considers black areas as the area to engrave which means you need to turn the white areas to black on the image. For line spacing, use 0.1mm or 10 lines per mm. Regarding the constant power mode setting, I had mixed results. For the Messi and Ronaldo engraving, I had to keep it on to get a good result. And for the Lebron James engraving, I had to keep it off. Tell me in the comments what worked for you. Once you have the image ready, focus the laser on top of the painted granite and engrave it at the speed and power you found. For the Messi and Ronaldo engraving, I used 2100mm per minute and 100% power. For the Lebron James image, I used 7500mm per minute speed and 30% power. And for the nameplate, I used 100% power and 1800 millimeter per minute speed. For the nameplate kind of designs, you can also paint fill the engraving if you like and wipe the excess off. If you don't want to do that, you can also use a knife to scratch the engraving and make it more white. After the engraving is done, clean the burnt and excess paint using lacquer thinner or turpentine oil and you'll have beautifully engraved granite. That's pretty much everything there is to know about laser engraving granite. And always remember, 
Lasering is so much fun, but try to keep it safe. Never take it for granite. If you think I missed anything, please let me and others know in the comments below. If you think the video was helpful, click that like button. If you didn't, you could hit the other one. Also subscribe to the channel to learn more about lasers. And if you have any questions, you can reach me at mail at mellopine.com and visit mellopine.com cnc for some cool content. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.